views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Even when there's not a pandemic, the college application process can be confusing and stressful. High school seniors, many of them not even 18 years old, are asked to make decisions that could affect the rest of their lives. The pandemic has only thrown a wrench in the whole process. Instead of visiting campuses or college fairs to talk to current students or administrators, this year's seniors are spending extra hours on Zoom and watching YouTube videos. Welcome to Bronx Connections, the digital divide. I'm Nora Thomas. And I'm Elliot Chaparelli. We're reporters for WFUV, an NPR affiliate station based on the Rose Hill campus of Fordham University in the Bronx. Bronx Connections is a joint initiative between BronxNet TV, WFUV News, and Norwood News. This is the second episode in a new iteration of our show. This time, we're covering the new abnormal. This week, we're continuing the conversation from our last episode about education, but this time at the collegiate level. I caught back up with Ilana Drake. She's a high school senior, and last week, she told me about trying to manage extracurricular activities, her studies, and her social life virtually. This week, we talked about the future, the unknown, and the important decision hanging over her head and the heads of her friends. Goodness, Elliot, I really can't imagine what applying to college must feel like in Zoom world. <laughs> Elliot and I went through the application process four years ago. For my part, I remember being incredibly overwhelmed by how many schools are out there. Fortunately for me, the College and Career Readiness Hat Counselor at my high school invited a bunch of admissions counselors from different schools to talk with us. She would also invite former students to share their experiences. I really can't imagine what it would feel like if all of that was online on top of Zoom High School. I don't know if I could have done it. I remember agonizing over my college decision. Like you said, it wasn't that long ago. I was lucky enough to have some options, so I methodically visited several of them and crossed them off my list. It only took me half of my visit to a school in the middle of a city without a campus to realize I wanted the stone buildings and the green quad from the movies. I get what you mean. But visiting colleges and being visited by college reps isn't an option for everyone. That was something we were lucky to experience. Is there a chance these virtual events that colleges are now having are making them somewhat more accessible to students who can't travel? I hope they do. Even before the decision, that actual application process was so long and confusing, I couldn't have completed it without ample help from my parents at home and my teachers at school. That was such a privilege. And having that help in person, being able to walk into a guidance counselor's office rather than setting up meetings, that made a difference. And then, of course, there's those standardized tests, that whole other layer of preparation and confusion. A lot of schools are waiving those this year, though. Which is great for a lot of students. Waiving standardized test requirements levels the playing field for students who don't have access to prep, test prep courses or who can't afford to pay the fees to take the test, much less to send their scores to all the schools they're applying for. That seems like a good decision on the part of these schools. I imagine asking for those rec letters is a little bit harder when you can't do it face to face. And of course, writing all those extra essays when all you wanna do is walk away from the computer after a long day of Zoom classes. Seriously, I thought I was going to die writing my personal statement. <laughs> but Elliot, I have to think a lot of high schoolers are skeptical about whether it's worth it to pay a premium for private university in particular if classes could wind up being online. Yeah, that's something I asked Ilana Drake. She's a senior at the high school for math, science and engineering. Last time we spoke, we talked about online school. What if that continues into the fall? Would you be willing to start your freshman year of college online? I think I'd definitely be willing to start it online um, based around public health and based around what's happening in our country. Um, I would definitely love to be in person and get to have that experience of seeing people and socialization and having classes in person, even if it's wearing a mask. Would you pick one school over another because one was offering in-person classes? I don't think that would be the primary reason I would pick one school over another, but it might be a factor. Um, however, I think if I'm really excited about a certain school, I would still go even if it's, even if it's online um, for the first semester or if it's online for the whole year. Okay, so pre-pandemic, what was your plan A? Where did you see yourself after graduating high school? 
So pre-pandemic, I had a pretty similar plan after graduating high school, which was to attend college um, and hopefully major in sociology. That's my first um, hopeful major. And um, I'm very interested in that because it's the study of understanding others um, through understanding their religions, um, social class, race, and how all those different factors interact. And I think now I'm still even more excited about that prospect of studying sociology and prospect of hopefully going away in the fall after being in New York City for the past year. So you plan to try to move away from home? I think so. Um, I applied to a lot of schools outside of New York and a few schools in New York. Um, so we'll have to see, but I would definitely like to go out of New York City. So what are the top factors you're considering as you make this decision? So as I made my decision to apply, um, I was really I was really basing my decision around um, what I've heard about a certain school or even if I attended certain webinars. So um, a lot of schools did a lot of outreach. So virtually um, through email. So if a school reached out to me, um, I would attend their events. I would look into the school. Um, I also based it around my peers. So any of my peers that I knew who were a year, a year older or um, two years older, if I um, knew them, I would touch base with them about a certain school. I'm very lucky though, because I was actually able to tour schools pre-pandemic, which was extremely important because I was able to see the students at a certain school and I was able to meet people from certain school and just be able to understand the campus culture and the vibe of a certain school. And that was really helpful, although I was only able to tour a few schools um, before the pandemic. But did you find that since you're applying to schools outside of the area in which you live, um, that those extra webinars helped you, that virtual tours helped you? Like, And were there any virtual events that a school put on that really stood out to you? I actually really enjoyed the virtual events just because I felt like I was able to ask questions that I might not normally ask in person because over Zoom, you can use the chat function or you can use like the Q&A function. And doing that, um, if you're a little bit shy, like at those um, actual in-person webinars or in-person events, you might not wanna ask a question um, to a group of 500 people because you have to say your name, you have to say your grade and you have to say like where you're from sometimes. Um, and that's a little bit daunting, but over Zoom, it's a lot easier. And I think over Zoom, I was able to get a pretty good idea of what certain schools really valued in terms of ethics, morals, um, and also the campus culture and seeing students from a certain school on the webinars too, and hearing about their experiences at that school or at that institution, and then putting that into perspective and putting their experiences um, into perspective with my experience or my hopeful experience. So just having Zoomed with you twice to interview, I know you're applying to top tier schools. I can just tell. Um, how did a lot of these schools becoming test optional change your plans? Did you take any of those standardized tests? I actually did take standardized tests. Um, so I took my first standardized test last March, which was an SAT, and that was not the best result. Um, I took that really without um, you know studying that much. Um, however, I took that last March um, in person in my high school, I think on March 6th. Um, and that was the first SAT I ever took. And then what happened was that because of COVID, um, I was going to be taking more standardized exams through the spring, or that was the plan before COVID happened. Um, right. But then because of COVID, a lot of schools went test optional, but I still signed up for the ACT and SAT. So throughout this fall, I was going to take the exams, um, but a lot of the times they were canceled. So I actually ended up signing up for a lot of exams, both the ACT and the SAT, because I didn't know which ones would actually end up happening, um, as a lot of those test sites were canceled, either around state politics or around city politics, um, or just generally based on the school that the test was being held at, or the test site. So um, I actually did end up testing this fall, um, which meant that um, I did not know if I was testing until a day in advance because a lot of the times um, test sites would cancel right beforehand. So I remember that there was one ACT that I was excited about. I think it was during August um, or maybe it was September and they ended up canceling the day before and I'd actually had to call the school like four times just making sure that it was still on because I was commuting from the city to this other school which was in New Jersey to take the test. Um, and that would mean waking up at 5.30 a.m. in order to get to the school or get to the test site. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the test sites in New York City were canceled. So 
many of my peers actually had to go outside of the city to take exams, which obviously is its own inequity because in the city, there wasn't that much access to standardized exams, um, unless you were in a school that offered it during the fall, which was, I know my friend who's in a private school actually had access to taking an SAT in the fall at her high school. But because I've been online since last March, that was not an opportunity or there was no option to do that. Um, so I ended up testing in Connecticut and New Jersey. Um, I actually took one ACT, which I was extremely happy about. And that was from October. I took that in um, New Jersey and um, that was a great experience. It was weird being in a school that I had not been in um, and a school that was actually open and like seeing people because I had not been in, I have not been in school since last March, um, but I did end up testing and I ha did not get to study for the exams. Like I probably would have in the spring because I didn't know if they would be canceled. And I think mm -hmm. test optional is a great opportunity in terms of the inequities, um, but it's also understanding that there's a lot more applications this year than normal. So a lot of it is hopefully going to be done, but I just don't know how they can read um, many, many, many applications at the same time without understanding um, the inequities with the process too. So through all this, obviously you had tons of hurdles to take these exams and I know there must've been hurdles elsewhere in the process. Was it extra hard to get help during the pandemic with all of this? I would definitely say yes. Um, I think being in my high school before the pandemic, we could always ask the guidance counselor questions at any time throughout the day. Um, I mean, my high school does not have free periods, but during lunch, I could just always go to the guidance counselor if I needed to ask a quick question, or there was always a way to touch base with my guidance counselor. However, throughout the pandemic, um, there wasn't really that much help with the college process. And I think that itself was very difficult. However, both my parents graduated from college so I think that was extremely helpful with the process because they both knew how it works. Um, but for other people, like some of my peers who do not have family who's graduated from um, a college or even has like a high school education, it's an extremely horrible process because it's so difficult to do, especially during the pandemic when you don't have the extra help or when you don't have those extra resources. And I think to add on to that, um, a lot of the inequities are also seen with schooling right now. Um, we are completely virtual. I'm in a specialized public high school. And although you might think that we have more resources, um, we have one guidance counselor for more than 250 people or 300 people in my high school. Um, and that's the college guidance counselor actually. And it's been pretty difficult to get access to um, extra help with the college process, I would say. So a lot of it has been through my own research or through my own understanding, um, or even just through um, speaking, to other, speaking to other people or my peers um, in my class. And then um, with regard to resources, it's unfortunate because the private schools are open right now. And that means that they have access to the college guidance counselor and they're able to ask questions and able to actually maybe even meet a admissions rep. I'm not sure if that's a thing right now, but um, being able to do that or being able to have access to teachers to ask questions um, if they're unsure about a platform or even um, what they had on their application. And that was not a thing. There was nobody to look over our essays at my high school. Knowing what you know now, what do you think your school could have done to remedy this problem during the pandemic? And then how do you think maybe colleges could have filled that gap on their end? It's definitely tough to say what my school could have done um, because everyone's in a different boat with COVID. And I think COVID has impacted everyone very uniquely. Um, and in their own way, because I know that some of my peers are facing food insecurity right now and they don't have access to resources. So they don't even have access to remote learning resources. There are definitely students in New York City that probably are not learning as well remotely. And I think it's hard because from a school's perspective, you want to make sure that everyone's doing the same or that everyone, everyone has the same equity um, in the process or has the same resources with, with remote learning. And I think the college process sort of came last with that because we wanted to make sure that everyone was okay in terms of mental health, in terms of what's happening with everyone's families, um, parents losing jobs, uh, even food insecurity, making sure that people have enough to eat. And I think the college process took a back seat with that. Um, I would say to colleges, I'm extremely grateful that there was this outreach um, virtually, that there were events being held that you could attend over Zoom where you got a better sense of what was happening at a certain school or the school's vibe or the school's values. Um, and I think that was extremely helpful. 
but I would say that it was definitely tough to do the process um, on my own as compared to other years where, you know, you'd have a guidance counselor to ask. Um, and even the inequities in New York City specifically, where a lot of students actually have their own private guidance counselors. Um, even in my public high school, I know that people did have their own counselors to help them with the process. So they were not only using our high school guidance counselor, but they were using their own private counselor, which also speaks to the inequities of living in a city where it's really like the tale of two cities. Um, but I think that was definitely tough because I understood that other people had more resources in this process. And even with standardized testing, same thing speaks with um, location of taking the tests um, or even being in another state because New York is extremely liberal with politics. So the city specifically had um, no test sites where you could take it or the test sites were mostly canceled throughout the pandemic. However, in other states, like let's say Georgia or Alabama, the test sites may have not been canceled. So if you were able to fly or if you had the resources to do that, you could have taken the test when other people were unable to because they did not feel comfortable flying or they did not have the resources to fly. Right. I hear you saying that everyone's just balancing such a thin line, like your school trying to help everybody get the resources they need and then college being there and then the state trying to keep everyone safe and healthy, but then trying to get kids in school, it has to be an unimaginable thing to go through yourself and to try to figure out as an educator. Um, so just to kind of wrap up, I'm guessing decisions have started coming in and if they haven't, they'll be coming in sometime very soon. What have you been doing to start to help make such an important decision? So a lot of the hard part with this is the waiting period, I would say, of waiting for decisions to come back. And that's definitely really daunting and um, extremely challenging because you know, you're still taking your remote classes, you're still doing your extracurriculars, but you're just waiting for colleges to announce their decisions and waiting to just see the portal. So during this time, um, I have been just trying to relax. And I think also to make my decision, um, I mean, I'm still waiting for schools to come back. So no decisions made yet, but I'm extremely excited about the prospect of attending certain schools or the prospect of hearing back from certain schools too. And that's really exciting. So personally, I feel like since I went through this only four years ago, I have a pretty good understanding of this process, but is there anything that I haven't asked about that we aren't even thinking about that was a challenge or that actually turned out really well for you this year? I'm trying to think. Um, I think the extra help during this process was definitely a challenge for many students, not just me, but specifically for students whose parents did not attend college, it was even harder for students who did not have the resources or even students who did not take the initiative to reach out or students who were actually afraid to reach out um, for extra help, for, like if they wanted to email a counselor or if they wanted to email um, someone at their high school. And I think that's the tough part about COVID because a lot of it is emailing and a lot of it is taking the initiative as a student, um, which is extremely different from when you're in school because when you're in school, if you do poorly on a test, you know, a teacher might tell you to see them later or they might touch base with you in the hallway. But during COVID, it's hard to reach students more so unless a student is checking their email constantly or unless a student is very reliable with Zoom or unless a student really takes that initiative to meet the teacher or to go for extra help. And I think that was definitely a tough part of the process. <laughs>
thank you for joining us. I was just wondering how the college admissions process has been going this year. It's been a challenging process, I think, for students and families uh, everywhere. And uh, certainly for those of us on the admissions side as well, lots of changes. Uh, the, not, we don't have the ability to see and meet students and families in all the same ways with reduced travel and limitations for campus visits. So we've been, um, I think, creative and innovative and also really rethinking the process to make it as accessible as possible, given all of the restrictions in the pandemic. What are some of the ways that you've made things accessible online? Certainly. So a uh, couple of things that we're doing, um, we, we, like many other colleges, went test optional this year. So that eliminated some of the barriers that students were experiencing, especially with testing. Um, we had been thinking about that for a number of years because of the disparities that testing causes. And so this year, uh, given the pandemic, we went ahead and we moved forward with that. We also are using self-reported scores for students who, uh, that's that can be a challenge, right? S uh, sending your scores is expensive. So we also were implementing that pre-pandemic. We then, when the campus is closed, we started to create an entire new array of virtual events. And so everything from virtual tours, we had a we had a virtual tour online that hardly, you know, people used, but not at great uh, length, but now it's a, it's a showcase. Um, but again, it's given us the ability to meet students who wouldn't have the, normally have the opportunity to travel um, to New York to meet, to see us. And we even did virtual travel. So uh, we got to go to high schools that we didn't always get to go to because it's limited. Um, so those are some of the things that we've been doing uh, during the year. That all sounds really interesting, and I'm glad that students are still getting the opportunity to get a sense of what the campus life is like, even if you know we're all just sort of sitting in our little rooms all day and not interacting with anyone. Um, have you got has Fordham done any particular outreach to the uh, the Bronx community? Absolutely, it's very important um, that we. Uh, do outreach to the Bronx community. If we were on campus, we would be hosting group tours and having high schools, uh, but we have a very strong commitment to our local neighborhoods. And so we were very intentional in the programming that we did for students interested in commuting. So that's local students. We have a dedicated person whose admission territory is the Bronx. She's also our inaugural, inaugural Associate Director of Diversity Initiatives. So she was doing outreach to high schools in the Bronx directly. Um, and we also do programs for our HEOP program, programs for students of color. So all different topics that we think would be interesting for all students, but hopefully students in the local area as well. I hope uh, you guys have had success um, in garnering uh, local students' interest. Um, well, I guess at this point, it's, it's March, so you probably have a pretty good sense of uh, who all has applied to Fordham for the next school year. Um, have demographics or just like the number of applications, how is that different um, than it has been in the past? So a lot of things changed. Um... Our applications, we get more than uh, 47,000 applications last year. And so this year we had more than 45,000 applications. So just a little bit less. Um, of course, students from international locations, that was a little bit less this year. Students from uh, the West Coast a little bit, but increases in you know a 250 mile radius. So a lot of students are rethinking their plans and they have more high, more colleges on their lists. And they also have a lot of college is a little bit closer to home. I think the pandemic has, you know, wanted to make travel a little bit more accessible. But the national trend has been students are applying to more colleges. The test optional piece has made more colleges potentially accessible for students. And so there's a lot more activity out there. Um, students are also doing things quite late. So we have been extremely flexible with our deadlines to try to help students who are getting to the process much later. Not everyone has the benefit of counseling, especially when you can't be in the school building every day. And so with students going in and out of hybrid remote learning, we're trying to create as much time and space as possible. So if a student is only getting to the college process a little bit later, they still can apply. So working with students, um, in really an, an unusual time. 
That, that note on flexibility, I think, is really important and maybe something that people who aren't directly involved in college admissions maybe aren't thinking about, but definitely, like, uh, do you deal with graduate admissions at all? We don't. I don't. We're, okay. uh, I'm solely for undergraduate admission. We have a number of different graduate deans and directors for the different schools. That makes sense. Just one thing I'd, I'd heard is that, like, uh, this year is particularly hard for getting into um, prestigious graduate programs because so many students deferred last year, um, not wanting to do hybrid or remote um, school. And I was just wondering, is that an issue? Did members of the class of 2024, uh, did a lot of them defer at Fordham? Not for Fordham. So in, in some colleges, yes, their undergraduate deferral numbers went up. In in a, in a year, a non-pandemic year, maybe we would have a dozen or, or 15 students defer. This year, we had about 50. But half of that group deferred only to the spring, um, hoping that things would maybe improve a bit. And then the other deferred to the fall. So because um, we have that kind of enough room, that's not as critical for us. But when a college or a university maybe has a single digit acceptance rate is, is incredibly selective, then that can put a little bit more pressure on the class because those spots are being held. Um, but for most colleges and universities, the deferrals didn't have that great of an impact. That was Patricia Peake from Fordham University. Elliot, one thing we haven't talked about so much yet, the financial side of all this. Right. College is expensive. There's no way around it. And in a time when so many families are struggling financially, there's another very real and very valid option. Don't go. Traditional degrees or any degree at all isn't right for everyone. And we want to acknowledge that. Some people might choose to wait and work. Others might choose a community college to save money or a career where a degree isn't necessary. But no matter what you do, this past year has changed something for you. It's changed something for all of us. And we're all just hoping things find this new abnormal by fall as cases continue to drop and vaccines are rolled out. next week where we'll discuss the new abnormal by looking at entertainment, specifically music and virtual concerts. Special thanks to Ilana Drake and Patricia Peake for joining us. Thanks also to Sheila Maloney from the World News, Louis Rebolledo and Michael Max Nobby and everyone else at BronxNet, and to George Budarki and Robin Shannon at WFUV. Read, watch, or listen to more for Bronx Connections, go to norwoodnews.org, wfuv.org, or bronxnet.org. I'm Nora Thomas. And I'm Elliot Chaparelli. Thanks for watching.